Uh, let's uh, start off. Let's start off our Bible study with a prayer. All right. Father in heaven, thank you so much for all the blessings that you give us. Blessings that that just never cross our mind. Never cross our mind, but you know. You know what we need, and you supply our needs. And we cannot thank you enough for that. Uh, please help our worship to be pleasing in your sight today. Please help us to have our hearts and minds in the right place. And, uh, and uh, please help us to uh, ask ourselves how we might be... Um, uh, more worthy of the blessings you've given us. Thank you for Jesus and the sacrifice that was uh, uh, made for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right, well, this is my first time in a while to be up here teaching. It's been a while. So let's see. So since, since I taught here last, uh, you know, I became a teacher. I became an eighth grade school teacher. So if any of you all act up in class, I'll give you all detention. Um, also, since then, I uh, celebrated an anniversary, my, my uh, Christian anniversary. I've now been a Christian for 40 years. 40 years. Now, how is that possible? I'm only 29. I don't get that at all. So, over the next uh, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, I haven't written it all yet, we are going to be studying on the church that Jesus built. The church that Jesus built. I asked AI, now AI can be wrong 10, 10 to 20% of the time, but I asked it, how many religions are in the world? And it said approximately 4,300. 4,300. And growing. Yeah, and growing, absolutely. And, and that makes you wonder, first of all, it makes me wonder, I was thinking about this on my drive here this morning, that, you know, that is a scheme of the devil, you know, to put out so many fakes out there so it's hard to find the, the church that Jesus built. So we're going to study that. Um, this is my home congregation right here. This is my home congregation. My grandfather was the uh, preacher there for 29 years, I want to say, 29 years. And so... I was I was just there here recently, so I thought that I would show you. Um, so, let's start. So, what church did Jesus build? Now, let me say, y'all might have a question here or there, you know, and it's possible I'm going to answer it on the third lesson. You know, I mean, I sit around and I think, what questions could y'all ask? What questions could y'all ask? And I tried to head those off early. So let's see if we can if we are successful. What church did Jesus build? Now, uh, one uh, one of my friends here uh, they said, "Don, this is too basic, too basic of a, of a class. It's too easy. You know, this is Bible 101." And I said, "Yeah, you're right. You're right. But sometimes we need to take a step back, work on our basics." And then we can go back to working on uh, uh, more difficult topics. So yes, this is basic. But I also thought to myself, maybe not everybody's heard this. What is basic to me may not be basic to you and vice versa. And so hence, uh, we want to hit the basics. Um, so what church did Jesus build? Not what your mom or dad taught you. That's not what we're going to discuss. Not what your minister taught you. Not what the media has taught you. And not what society has taught you. We're, this, the, the focus of this Bible class will be what does the Word of God, the Word of God, tell us about the church that Jesus built? Does it exist today? And if we are not in the church that Jesus built, how do we get into the church that Jesus built? I'm sure every single person here did not wake up this morning and say, you know, I'm going to go waste some time. I'm going to go waste some time, and y'all came to my Bible class, and, you know, you came to worship. I hope that's not the case. I hope the case is you are here for the fellowship, encouraging each other, being encouraged from others, learning what God, you know, what pleases God, you know, instructions, and hence, you want to please God. You want to find out what He wants in your life. 
And so that's what we're going to be studying. Um, John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way. That's singular. No, it's a singular. Even in Greek, it's singular. And the truth, also singular. I looked at every one of these Greek words up. It's singular. And the life, singular. No one, no one comes to the Father except through me. No one. You notice the truth is singular. It's not truth. It's not truth. That's hard to say. It's not truth. It's truth. <laughs> you know, it's singular. There's a truth out there. There's a truth. Um, now, in case you all doubt that all of this is singular, let's take a look at the Hebrew. All right. Also, notice that Jesus is the only way to heaven. Only way to heaven. Psalm 86, 11, where we get that other verse. Teach me your way. When well, Hebrew, that's singular. Oh, Lord, that I may walk in your truth. In Hebrew, that's singular. Unite my heart to fear your name. You notice there's truth out there. You know, uh, God is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of confusion. So we can, we can um, th there is a truth. And we can discover it. We can discover it. John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so hence, if it, if it is a, a religion that's not focused on Jesus, that does not believe that Jesus is the begotten, only begotten Son of God, you know, and that, and that he, you know, that he is God, you know, that's not the church that Jesus built. That's not, because the only way, the only way is through Jesus. It's not politically correct to say that, but we got to act like, kind of like we're attorneys, we're attorneys, and we're just telling, what, we're just saying what, what the, uh, you know, the contract says, you know, the contract says there's no way to heaven except through Jesus. So that gets rid of the sunshine theory. Um, in case y'all know what the sunshine theory is, imagine the sun is heaven, you know, and all the rays are coming out of it. And it doesn't matter what ray you go down, you're going to get to heaven. You see, there's that theory out there. That's not true. That's not what God said. So let's see what he does say. Um, and Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Notice that's all, not some, not most, you know. We need to listen to Jesus and only Jesus. We need to listen to Jesus and only Jesus. That's why we don't go to other people to find out, you know, uh, you know about the church that Jesus built. We will discover it ourselves. Um... This, uh, this eliminates any religion that, do, that does not worship Jesus only. Um, that's what God tells us, you know. So if they worship Allah, Confucius, or even ourselves, or even ourselves, you know, then, then that is not the church that Jesus built. Notice it says all authority, not some or most, all. Um, since Jesus has been given all authority, he expects us to do all that he has commanded us to do. And we gladly do it. We gladly do it without pride or love of self or love of our wants. You know, we, you know, Jesus has been given all authority. Jesus no, and he expects us to do what he commands us. Uh, Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven has been given to me. Go, go therefore, notice the command, Go, go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I... That didn't come out very... Did it come out up here? Where, where is it? In the name of the Father... Teaching that I, wow, that red doesn't work up there very well, sorry. That I, you know, 
That's referring to Jesus, that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. You know? So you notice that, you know, teaching them all that I have commanded you. I. <laughs> you see? Um, even the apostles taught this. The apostles. And he, God, put all things under his feet, Jesus' feet, and gave him, Jesus, as head over all things to the church. The church must submit to Jesus. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. Jesus is the Savior of the church. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. See, the church submits to Christ. It's his wants. It's his wants, not ours. You know, we don't, we don't have a vote on anything. You know, no, it's Jesus' church. Jesus' church. And the church humbly submits to Jesus. Um, but the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers, notice that true worshipers, will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. You know, it, I mean, it's not fun to hear. It's not fun to hear. But honestly, think about it. God created everything. I mean, everything. You know, there are some, and it bothers me to hear this, there are some that sometimes think that, yeah, God, He's all-powerful, all-powerful, but not Genesis 1 through 11. Oh, no. no. He can't do that. He can't do that. Paul? Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm trying. Thank you. I just wanted to emphasize one thing. Yes. It says about the true worshiper. Yeah. I mean, anybody can worship God in his or her little way, whatever. Yeah. He or she thinks, but it's talking about the true worship. That's right. And it, it occurs to my mind the worship that God accepts. Mm -hmm. Not every kind of worship is acceptable to God. That's it correct. It will be in spirit and the truth. I mean, like, so far what you say, how many all kinds of denominations we have today? Yes. They say, we're all about Jesus, we're all about things. But yet, when you examine their teaching, you'll find something that goes against, uh, you know, not quite according to the scripture. Uh -huh. And you think, ah, I don't. Yesterday, I was invited to a very nice congregation on the Prosper Street in, in Hartford, a great Seventh day Adventist church. Mm -hmm. I mean, that it's full of precious, beautiful people, mostly Jamaican descent. I, I'm a color blind. I, I, I don't say. Yeah. Uh, people so dedicated, some of them, not all of them, yeah. so dedicated, and they do like a, a, a deep lengths of stuff, not so much digging in the Bible. Yeah, uh, yeah some, but I, I, I want to dig there. I don't materialist, yeah. and I told him, I only accept if you can prove something about That's right, but chapter then, and verse. And my question, my question was, because I said saying about something extra scriptural mm -hmm. teaching, I say, do you accept that after the Bible has been completed, that there was some true revelation from God? They say, yes, we do. So I said, yeah. absolutely. And that's it. So, <laughs> but I didn't push it. Yeah. It went theatrical. It went, it, yesterday it was a ceremonial uh, event of washing each other's feet. Uh -huh. They had a man go upstairs, women go downstairs, put, put everybody on the chair. Uh, you, you know, put in a little plastic basin yeah. and clear water and really did it. And yeah. the towels and everything. And it was, it was a, a somebody who's going through all these things. Yeah. But then they realize that actually they are serving the law. And they're like, I, I'm, I'm not trying to put equation uh -huh. here. It would be very difficult for them to reconsider because, yeah. what do you mean? We go through all of this and you tell me it makes them pretty much be arrogant. Yeah. Uh, and what
will cover that. In truth, yeah. spirit, and the truth. That's what I wanted to oh. say. I'm sorry. I'm, thank you, Paul. I'm talking quite a bit, but thank oh. you for listening. <laughs> you got it. You got it. I mean, it's not pleasant to hear, but, you know, think about it. God created everything. The, 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 the you know, billions and billions of start, you know, light years away. There's, there's you know, galaxies. He created them. You know, and, 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 and so why do we humans feel that we can improve on God's way? You know, I mean, that's, you know, self-conceited, you know, that, uh, that that can happen. I know that uh, one time I had a landlord who, who uh, was a, a priest of a certain religion, and, and he and I would have discussions uh, all the time. And I once asked him if I could look at his Bible. And he said, yeah, sure, you know, and I was just looking through it. And I noticed that pages were missing, you know, and things were cut out, you know. And I said, I said, oh, well, what's this about? And he said, well, I was just getting rid of the stuff that's not from God, you see. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who, who are we? Who are we to edit God's word? Who are we to edit God's word, you know? But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers, that just naturally tells us that there are false worshipers, you know? So we'll have to look into that. When the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. Um, so what does it mean by true worshipers? Well, let's take a look. Uh, there's four types of worship. Four types of worship. The first one is self-made worship self-made worship sometimes also depending on what version you have in your bible also could be self-willed worship self-willed but you get the idea self-made worship colossians 2 23 these have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-made religion and asceticism and severity to the body but they are of no value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh you know, uh, there are those that, that, you know, subconsciously, you know, all of a sudden they, they just, it sounds so wise what they're saying. It's like, wow, man, that really makes sense. That really makes sense. But if it's against, you know, as Paul said, you know, if you can't give me Bible chapter and verse, then that's just your opinion. That's just your opinion. When I'm teaching uh, other, other men how to teach Bible class, one thing I'm very strict about is that, you know, when you're teaching, make sure that you emphasize when it's the Word of God and when it's your opinion, you know? If you ask me a question, and it's going to be on my opinion, hey, this is my opinion. Here's what it's worth, two cents. Take it or leave it, you know? Um, Self-made worship definition. Self-willed worship refers to a form of worship that is driven by personal preferences desires, or ideas, rather than adhering to the commands and guidelines established by God. This concept emphasizes that worship practices are chosen based on what an individual thinks is appropriate or pleasing to them, rather than being guided by God's word. See, self-made worship. So we want to make sure we don't fall into that trap. The second one. Ignorant worship. Ignorant worship. Um, this is Paul when he was talking to the people of Athens. You know, um, not, notice uh, he saw that there were, they, were wor um, they were wor in worship and ignorance, and he didn't let them continue. Notice that. He didn't let them continue. Out of love, he corrected them. So we can take that as an example for ourselves. You know, um, Acts 17, 23. For as I passed along and observe the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God. What therefore you worship is unknown, this I proclaim to you. You see, they were worshiping, the people of Athens were worshiping um, ignorantly. You know, they weren't chasing after their own self, you know, God says. No, they were just ignorant of, of the right way. And the, the Apostle Paul Lovingly corrected them. Lovingly corrected them. Yes, uh, Nancy? Yes. Um, we have to remember, and many of us, myself, especially, we're the 
we talked to Mr. Bowman. And if anybody has studied any history, it's Roman gods and goddesses, uh -huh. and the philosophers, Aristotle, and etc. Mm -hmm. And so they thought that those people were the truth. And it's very difficult when speaking with people in the world who have lived from day to day to day to really break through that that is made up. Yeah. That this is all coming from their head and not the truth of the word of God. Another thing. Yeah. Yes, please. Um, I think even the Church of Christ when in, in the churches that follow the word of scripture that we do um, have to be aware of progressive Christianity. There are books and books that are written. Yeah. And it is subtly and penetrated by churches as well. Yes. And once you get that little bit of difference to comply with the world standard. That's right. Yeah. I think we fall in our evangelistic spirit. Mm -hmm. We need to know what's out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Stan. I think uh, my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> um, all the gods have been living bad Catholic. Yeah. So the trouble with atheism troubles us. They have an unknown and we take it to the Catholic. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. I think we do that today. Also. Yeah. I mean, there are people searching for God. Yeah. And in your own mind, what God could look like. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's a number of different congregations that do that throughout the world. Yeah. And the religious thing, yeah, I'm going to follow this. No, so it's followed through the head. You know, it's not just back then, you know. Mm -hmm. so it's oh, yeah. Today, but it's a problem today. So a problem Absolutely. Today. Absolutely. It's a, it's a problem today also. You know, um, ignorant worship, kind of, to be honest, that kind of scares me a lot. You know, that there, just imagine there are people out there that are just ignorant. They're trying to please God. They're trying to please God, but they just don't know how. And that's where we come into play. Amen. Yeah. Um, uh, in a, ignorant worship definition. Ignorant worship refers to worship that is conducted without proper knowledge or understanding of who God is, what he desires, or how he should be worshiped. This type of worship can arise from a lack of accurate teaching, misinterpretation of religious practices, or simply not knowing what is expected according to divine instructions. You see, so we are there to help them out. Another, number three, number of, um, one is vain worship. Vain. And this actually goes along with what Paul was saying. You know, vain worship. Vain worship. This is when worship looks good on the outside, but is actually empty or meaningless. It is done without real sincerity or genuine respect for God, often just going through the motions without true devotion. You know, there's going through the motions, just going through the motions without true. Um, what's the difference between self-willed worship and vain worship? Okay, now it's going to probably advance 20 slides. Hmm. Difference between self-made and vain worship. Self-made worship. This happens when people worship God in ways they personally like or choose, rather than following what God has specifically asked for. It's about doing things your own way instead of God's way. In summary, self-made worship is about choosing your own way of worship, while vain worship is about doing worship that lacks real meaning or sincerity. Both miss the mark of true worship as described in God's Word. Um... But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and, and truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. Um, God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. You see, must. Here, the fourth way of worshiping, the fourth, number four, is true worship. True worship. A true worship will worship in spirit. In other words, the correct heart, right? They'll have the correct heart. 
They're here in worship, and, they're, and their heart's in the correct spot, right? But also, now that's not it. It's not, you know, or, you know, it's not, you know, well, we must worship him in spirit or truth. Well, no, the word's and. And in Greek, it's and. <laughs> it's a different word is or, a different word is and. It is 100% and. And, and so we must worship him also in truth, according to God's word only. According to God's word only, not listening to our wants. You know, we need to take ourself out of it, you know. And so we must, we must worship in spirit and truth. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. You know, it's my commandments. Yes. Uh huh. Bill still know that I'm God. And a lot of people are not able to worship the Father because they can't even think how to do it. Yeah. In order to have each other think of him with a good thing. Yeah. And then you're able to see God in the most part of your being. So it's very easy to think about to worship. And, you know, we can't be looking around. Mm-hmm. And that was what the lady was saying. Mm-hmm. This was the worship of God. Yeah. And you know, the scripture tells you that he's a thief of his own people. Mm-hmm. Each and every time you want to hear him for the true worship of God, not only for the girl in the Mm-hmm. But we need to worship in spirit and in truth. That's right. You know, and I am just saying to us that we can worship God. We should not think of things. Uh huh. Uh, Nancy. She says the question. Yes. Can we seek in spirit and truth? Those of us who have followed the gospel and repent are baptized and immersed in Christ, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. What I sometimes wonder is that there are a lot of other folks who believe the blood of Christ covers us, it's not essential for salvation, mm-hmm. and yet. They seem to have a form of the spirit. Mm-hmm. This baffles my mind because I wonder if it is the true spirit that is only, to my knowledge, and scripturally found, is only given after we are repent and are baptized and immersed in Christ. Mm-hmm. So, what spirit is there other than the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. that we are given after we obey the Father? Yeah. It's 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 subtle, and there are a lot of nice-minded, like wonderful people mm-hmm. in denominations, biblical, biblically sound mm-hmm. churches that really speak the truth, mm-hmm. but they do not believe that immersion is necessary for salvation. What do we do with that? Yeah, I actually will be covering that in either lesson two or lesson three. The only reason I say or is is because I haven't written them yet, so I don't know if they'll be in two or if they'll be in three. You know. So, okay. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. Um. So so here we see if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Whose commandments? Whose com- Don's commandments? You know, uh, this committee's commandments. Uh, this person's commandments. No. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. My commandments, you know, God doesn't care about our opinion, you know. I mean, let's be honest when it comes to this. Um, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, my word, not Don's word, not a committee's word, not, you know, no, my word. And my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Okay? And the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. Do we see this? Do we see that we are commanded to obey God's word? 
I mean, let's be real, you know. Um, God doesn't care what our opinions are, you know. It's his word, you know. Um, this is not a democracy. You know, this is something that we struggle with here in America. You know, that, uh, you know, that technically I know America is a constitutional republic, but I'm using democracy, you know, like in the voting sense. Um, you know, that God, you know, that this is not a democracy. This is a king who makes the rules and the subjects obey the king. If you want to be in his kingdom, then you have to obey the king. You know, if you don't obey the king, you're not going to be in his kingdom. You know, we got to obey the king. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what our parents think. It doesn't matter what the you know, minister, uh, minister you might meet out in the street thinks. It doesn't, it, you know, it does not matter. It does not. It is God's commands, and it's our job to humbly follow it. Humbly follow it. Um, we don't have to agree, but you do have to follow God. You know, it's a kingdom. Yes, Paul. I want to stress out. Yes. Let's stress something out for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times I, and I suppose a lot of other people as well, zoom through this verse 24. Mm -hmm. And say, so whatever, uh, whatever that, uh, whoever does not love me does not keep my word. And, uh, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. Sometimes I zoom through this without taking account and consider real careful what he said over here. Mm -hmm. Because, as I say, there's a lot of denomination uh, in the world call themselves Christian, and they zoom through that, mm -hmm. and they go through life doing their religious stuff, ceremonies, Doing through those things like I, I was exposed to yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, uh, feet washing and uh, things, and thinking like, yeah, yeah, I'm so good. Doing a lot of wonderful things, and we're still coming back to uh, Matthew seven twenty three, when Jesus Christ said, "I never knew you." And he said, "We did so many. We did this, 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 this." Jesus Christ said, yeah. "I never, I knew, never you. knew you." It is time. Yeah. Before it's too late mm -hmm. to stress out on this. Mm -hmm. Because what you think, what you want, is not necessarily what you do. Mm -hmm. And we need to, uh, like some people say, make no mistake about it. To make a mistake about it, it's your own fault. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. And, yeah. and what I was thinking, in, in, in the chapter 22 of Revelation says, that outside of the uh, uh, glorious New mm -hmm. Jerusalem, mm -hmm. there are dogs and animals. And that also, unfortunately, includes my dearest and nearest members of a family who already passed away outside of Christ. Mm -hmm. They've been called dogs and animals. None of them did anything bad to me. Mm -hmm. Why are they calling that? Apparently, while I'm living here, I don't see how God sees. Mm -hmm. And how God sees things, that's what we should see and rule our lives because that's what's coming to. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. uh, yes, Rainier. I was just going to say pretty much what Nancy said before. That, you know, for the application, you can see even that verse of 24, you know, there's a specific way that God has um, that gives to the better. Yeah. And I know um, Nancy was saying, you know, that there are other people that follow the truth but then don't do this. And I would say partial truth is not truth. Yeah. Um, truth is truth in its fullness yes. from A to Z. And so I, I would just say that that's the truth. And I would also just say that even when you mentioned vain worship, we can have the truth and right doctrine so mm -hmm. that there's no sincerity that we, we can fall into the pit. Of yeah. That's right. We, we need to worship in spirit and truth. So if all of a sudden we're all about truth, and, and but our heart's not in the right spot, we're no better off than the person that has the right heart but isn't following truth. You need both. You need both. Yes.
I mean, we're here for each other. You know, we're here for each other. Uh, absolutely. Um, was it Nick? Did I see you with your hand up, or is it not? I don't have my glasses on. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and it's good you brought, brought that up. You know, uh, I was mentioning, you know, my uh, old landlord, you know, and he one time, you know, told me, he goes, Donnie, 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 don't read the Bible. Don't read the Bible. Just listen to me and I'll get you to heaven. You know, and, and I, I said, Mr. Steve, I called him Mr. Steve because his last name was so long that even after I knew him for 10 years, I still couldn't pronounce it. But uh, I, I said, Mr. Steve, I said, I said, no, no offense. But let's say, you know, I end up in hell. It's not like I can find you and get revenge on you, you know. So why, you know, why does anybody just take someone's word? You know, we don't do that in any other arena. We don't need, we don't do that in any other arena, you know. Uh, if you're going to buy a car, you don't say, all right, just give me whatever, I'll sign it. No, you want to read it, you know. As far as you know, you're signing your name and it's 29% interest and you just, you know, I mean, you know, in no other arena do we trust people. But yet we seem to sometimes trust people instead of going to God's word, going to the source. And so we just sit there and say, oh, Bob, he, he knows the Bible, you know, and, and, you know, no, no. Well, you know, we need to, 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 to attack that head on, you know. Yes. One more thing. Yes. Yes. I had a Catholic priest tell me that those exact words mm -hmm. when I was searching. Yeah. And I was reading it and I was saying, why is this, why is this, why are these doing this in here? Mm -hmm. And he told me, you should follow the church. That's, that's right. <laughs> that's right. And, and that, that was the last time I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You know, we want to go to the source. We want to read it for ourselves. Read it for ourselves. Um, uh, you know, because like I said, it is it is a, a kingdom. He is a king. We are subjects. We don't get any input. You know, God's not saying, you know, I wonder what Don thinks that should be taken away from next Sunday's, uh, you know, worship. He's not doing that, you know. Oh, I wonder what Don, you know, I wonder what he wants to Maybe add. Maybe you can add something to, to my worship that I hadn't thought of. You know, God's not, God's not doing that. He's not doing that. Um, John 13, 20. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever receives the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Who's Jesus talking about here? Do we know? Who is Jesus talking about here? Now, while, while y'all are thinking about it, you know, anytime we see truly, truly, you know, that, that I, I, my humble opinion, I think that's how, you know, a lot of times Jesus would be talking to great multitudes and he didn't have the you know, benefit of that, you know what I mean? And, and so he would, you know, so sometimes I think he would repeat himself if it was super important and, and so that he'd get people's attentions. You know, truly, truly, I say to you, oh, hold on, Bob, hold on, Bob, I got to hear this. I got to hear this. You know, this is something important, you know, 
Because it seems like a lot of times in Scripture, when Jesus is trying to make a very important part, a very important point, he'll repeat himself. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever sees the one I send receives me, and whoever sees me receives the one who sent me. Who do, who do we think that is talking about? Um, not in this verse, though. But I expected that answer, yeah, because, uh, yes. Well, yes. Hundred percent agreement. Yeah. What what my point was, my my point is, is that you know when it comes to changing the word of God or changing our worship practices, you know, and that that you know uh, God is not interested. He uh, 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 he is talking. Hold on, Paul. A second. We're only got a minute to go. Um, he's talking here to the about the apostles. He's talking about the apostles. The word apostle means one sent, one sent. So we need to obey the apostles' teachings. As well as, you know, see, so we had to see this because, you know, uh, uh, yeah, Nick, you have a question? Sorry, the, uh, and then Paul, I don't know what uh, translation that is. ESV. Mine says, whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me. Mm. That's what mine says. So, yeah, so you have the NIV, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah. But we had a Bible class on that. Amen. Is it, that's a bad, bad word there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but we, we are told in other places, you know, that we are to go out. I was just talking about this specific verse, you know what I mean? Just yeah. this specific verse, you know. Uh, Paul, go ahead. Yeah, but it's also our own responsibility of each one, first and last one of yeah. us, to yeah. check who this person is sent by. Oh, yeah, yeah. It yeah. should be truth, all the truth, and nothing but the truth. Yeah. But not like he have a story, whatever, because the Old Testament gives us example how to check if the prophet is from God or not. It could be apostles of evil, uh, uh, and it's our responsibility to check them. Thank you. Uh-huh. Uh, but, you know, I'm, here it's talking about, the, you know, the uh, 12 like apostles. Berians, like Bereans say, they oh, were yeah. more noble, because not only they accept it, but they check everything that, that, that the apostles told them. Uh -huh. They so wondered, but they also checked with the church. Yeah. Yeah, this is talking about the 12 apostles, you know. Uh, so so Jesus is saying, you know, that, hey, you know, I've, you know, they, they were with me for three years. You know, I taught the 12 apostles. They know the truth also. So we need to follow them as well. In our last verse uh, for now. Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you talking about the apostles, and do all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whoever hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. Who, you know, uh, you know uh, one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit is to ensure the reliability of God's word. And the Holy Spirit guided the apostles in the writing of the scriptures. And so we have to obey them. We have to obey them. All right, well, that ends the class. Um, and we will continue from there next week. Thank you so much. Amen. Come on. Slide 19. Slide 19.